Hello, everyone. Welcome to English Without Borders. Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, We're so happy uh, to uh, see all of you uh, in 2022. Our first webinar will be presented and will be opened by Firuz Kakroev. So those of you who don't know Firuz Kakroev, uh, I'll, before I'll give some brief information about his bio, I'd like to tell you that Firuz uh, is one of our active members of English Without Borders, and he was awarded with uh, a certificate uh, of the most active uh, participant of English Without Borders Thursday webinars. And he participated in the English Without Borders National Conference November last year, and he also had a posted presentation there. So thank you, Firuz, uh, you know, to uh, agree with, uh, to agree doing this um, webinar with English Without Borders. So uh, Firuz Kakroev graduated from Tajik State Institute of Languages in 2006 with a diploma of English teacher. During the study in the Institute from 2004 and 2006, Firuz Kakroev worked as a volunteer in the International Association for the Exchange of Students for Technical Experience in a position of culture program member. In 2006, he had his first internship in Sunflower Kindergarten in Bangkok, Thailand. In 2007, he also worked as an English teacher in British and American uh, educational company, Bangkok, Thailand. From 2007 to 2008, he worked as an English teacher in a gymnasium number four by name Timur Sobirov in Baghdad, Tajikistan. From August 2008 to 2010, he worked as an interpreter, translator in the project management group, Energy Loss Reduction, Open Stock Holding Power Company, Barkitojik, Dushanbe, Tajikistan. From 2010 to 2019, he worked as an assembler and an assembler and operator of machines producing plastic doors and windows in St. Petersburg, Russian Federation. And from 2019 up to now, he's the director of public organization Zabondon. Also, he's a teacher and a coordinator of English Access Micro Scholarship Program in Vahdat. Tajikistan. Thank you, uh, Firuz, and welcome to English Without Borders. And uh, so let me just remind you that uh, Firuz will be talking about uh, American Teen Talks. And uh, in this uh, webinar, in this session, he will give you complete information about this book. Thank you, Firuz. And now the floor is yours. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Gurnara. 
Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, happy New Year to you all, and hope that this New Year will bring you a lot of uh, good uh, memories, good things for you and for your lives. Uh, fortunately, I'm here, uh, as I told that, yes, I will present today the American Teen Stock. Uh, this is the resource which uh, will were, were created uh, uh, somewhere here uh, <laughs> in the US, but uh, for with the help, I mean, for the help of Tajik teachers. And the author who created here, this is Nancy Ackles, who is presenting uh, here with us today. Thank you, Nancy, and uh, hello uh, for, and again, thank you for your joining to our webinar today, because uh, as I told earlier, then if Nancy is here, it means that I have a good guard with me that uh, will help if I have some problem with this issue. Uh, I hope that Nancy will know, and uh, she is a creator of this book and give us more information about, uh, uh, about the given resource. Actually, shall I start now with my uh, uh, sharing my screen? Okay, this is big, yeah? It's I mean, uh, in the whole uh, screen, is it, Gunnaro? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, uh, this is American Teen Stock. Uh, American Teen Stock is a collection of interviews of American high school students, both in written and in audio format. Uh, this book was written by uh, Nancy Ackles uh, after she did an English teaching mentoring program in Tajikistan. By the way, now I'm in the ETM program and we are having our fourth day of, uh, of, of the second time already. And uh, these days I will, I'm in the ETM program up to January 13. It, it would be good if you would join us, Nancy. <clears throat> Okay, and uh, when uh, later, I mean, some, uh, somewhere in 2009, uh, Nancy Ackles, uh, one of the Tajik, uh, our, our Tajik teachers asked her for a resource, uh, for a resource uh, of, uh, of American uh, authentic speech. Uh, when uh, Nancy went back to the US, she couldn't find this kind of books, but, uh, she find the way how to do it. She interviewed 30 young uh, teenagers and created this book. Uh, that's why this book uh, comes with, uh, uh, with a reading passage and with uh, audio format. Uh, how you will uh, get this book? You can find this book, uh, fortunately now in EWB resources. I put the link here. You can uh, just click on it. You can find all the resources, oh, sorry. You can find all the resources here and in americanenglish.state.gov resources. You can also find uh, there in both, uh, in both links, you can find and book and also uh, all the interviews in audio format. American Teen Stock, uh, as I said already, is a collection of interviews of American high school students, both in written and in audio format. And each in interview is accomplished by vocabulary notes and discussion questions. Uh, here in this slide, you can see that uh, each chapter consists of a photo and uh, questions and the answers there. And also uh, below, you can uh, see discussion questions as well. Uh, okay, uh, then uh, there will be uh, some vocabulary question, which uh, let me find. Oh, okay, it will come up a little bit later. I just wrote uh, some objectives. Uh, if uh, if you do, if you need uh, uh, maybe some objective of, uh, I just divided with writing, uh, with speaking, and with doc dictogloss. For example, at the end of the presentation, students will be able to write uh, their own ideas uh, after listening and answering the questions or with the speaking. At the end of the presentation, students will be able to speak about the American teenagers and answer to his or her question and to speak about differences between the life of the US and Tajikistan. Uh, what else I wanted to say except this? Uh, during with this interview, uh, Yes, with this interview, you can, uh, uh, this was created. I think Nancy, when uh, you were here in 2009, 
I think she knew the problem uh, with the lack of resources in Tajikistan. That's why this book was uh, created uh, for uh, for using, uh, for making your class using uh, with the limited resources, using uh, as uh, less as uh, things which you have. But fortunately, now uh, we have a lot of things, and you can uh, you can uh, think your lesson, uh, and you can do create uh, your activities as uh, as you as you wish. Vocabulary. Uh, we I wrote here vocabulary, but in the book you can find a few words, but not vocabulary. Why? Uh, because a few words in the section uh, which is not called uh, vocabulary. Because by the name of the vocabulary, uh, our students will find out that we need to learn these words by heart. Or, or I mean, this is another good thing that uh, students will not find it in the students will not find it in, in the dictionary because mostly they are slang uh, uh let's say uh, let's see some of them hang uh yes you can find hang in the dictionary but hang with hang out with i mean it could be a little bit difficult for you to find it uh, in our uh, dictionaries or maybe for this you need another kind of dictionary like a uh, dictionary of slang or something else uh, hang, hang uh, with, hang out with, very informal words that means talk uh, to and enjoy being with friends without doing anything special or exciting. Or so socialize, an informal way of saying have fun with other people. Okay, now we know what the Burger King and McDonald's is. Before uh, it was really uh, miss, uh, some kind of word that we couldn't uh, find out what does it mean. Or oh, uh, I really like this one, nail shop. A small shop where women can get manicure or have their fingernails painted, yes? For, for us, if nail shop, it means that you can take out your nail, you can throw it away, you can find a new one and put it uh, on your fingers. <laughs> but no, you see, uh, that's why, uh, yes, used to. We have used to in our dictionary, you can find. Or uh, the word drama. The word drama in this sentence, drama means excitement, especially negative excitement. But uh, actually, yes. And uh, as you know, we are also working uh, in our access classes. We had uh, with Afghan refugees also we work. And the same kind of things, uh, Afghan, uh, our Afghan refugee students, they call the whole uh, kind of uh, things which shows in the theater, they call drama. Even if it's novel, if it's love story, if, if it's a thriller, everything, they call just drama. That's why the main uh, just show they think that it is drama. This is another kind of things that uh, should be saying in the vocabulary. That's why uh, by it means if a vocabulary, it means you need to find these things in the, in the dictionary. But uh, unfortunately, some of them you can't find. And this is the way of uh, saying in one part of the country, or which uh, I mean, uh, students should know. Yes, teacher could work with them. Teacher could explain them. But uh, definitely for students to come out to find the dictionary to find it, it's impossible, unfortunately, for them. Okay, next, uh, we come up with reading. Uh, in reading, uh, we can use a different uh, kind of things. Here in the interview, you have uh, questions and you have the answers. Let's see reading uh, with Michael. Uh, there's also, Okay, in a, in a dictionary, you can find keeps you going. I mean, the phrase has more than one meaning. Keep often means continue of doing something. Or stuff. Stuff is mean those things which prepared for some kind of uh, activities. For example, here it says about the fishing. I mean, the stuff, it means fishing rods, fishing poles, uh, hooks, and so on. Okay, and uh, in the discussion question, uh, you can see the answers uh, and uh, I mean the questions and the answers. Uh, you can just divide uh, your students into group and you will give them uh, uh, this kind of question. Okay, it's better if you divide them into, it depends on the quantity of your group. If you have 12, let them fall in one group, yes. And uh, there will, you will have three groups and in three groups, just give them the answers and uh, ask them uh, to read it and uh, try to find uh, your answers, okay, uh, with the Michael. 
or if uh, you will start beginning with the Michaels, uh, you will start beginning with the Michaels questions and uh, then uh, you will ask them, okay, what will you do in his uh, situation? Can you, some, uh, can you make some kind of uh, ending, okay? Just like predicting. This, uh, you could uh, also, you could divide this kind of uh, activities into parts. Uh, the first part you can give them as pre-reading or during reading or post reading. Uh, in during reading, you can come up with the vocabularies. Uh, those things, will, I mean, as uh, it starts in the in the book, I mean, in the American teen stock, it started, no one knows uh, your class better than you do. I mean, better than the teacher does. And if you know your class, you know that the level of uh, their knowledge or uh, their of vocabulary. You have to look at it uh, as a teacher. You have to look at it, and you write all the vocabularies, uh, and then you can uh, play with the vocabulary as well. Uh, what does it mean to play? Okay, you will uh, divide them again into the groups, and you will give them a uh, first prediction, or you will just explain them. It's better if you start uh, your lesson. Uh, in English and you have to give vocabulary and even explanation uh, in English uh, without uh, expecting them, e okay, it's the elementary level and students will not understand. No, the students will understand it because uh, it depends on how you will produce your uh, material. If you give them the first uh, vocabulary, uh, then you, you can play with them. You will just hang it or uh, some words on the board, on the flip charts and everywhere. And you will give them, okay, just go one by one and see uh, how it works. Then uh, there, the student has to answer it. Yes, if the elementary, they have a level elementary, they will start uh, speaking, but they have mistakes. Uh, they can't explain. Uh, they will just do, maybe they found one synonym. Even if you have one synonym, if, if they found the, the word with a synonym, you have to praise them and you have to say yes. And you could give more uh, explanation on it. Uh, you could uh, give more wide explanation. Uh, the same kind of things. And uh, what about the during uh, reading uh, question? You can just, again, you can give this uh, things and you you have to see uh, okay and i see uh, let let's say i just got in the middle and i see a fishing pole in your hands yeah uh, uh michael sound answer yeah i like to go to the pond and fish uh the word pond uh yes in some uh, i'm sorry in some uh countries the pond is not so uh, uh how can it is not so famous can we say yeah because, uh, for example, here in Tajikistan, it's really hard to find ponds in the outside. But uh, let's see the same if you are in Russia. In all the streets, you can find big uh, ponds in a, uh, in a parks in everywhere. That's why even outside of your house, if you are going to fish, you can go outside and you can uh, fish uh, everywhere you wish. That's why in this case, uh, you have to explain your students what does the ponds mean first. And then, uh, you will give them okay where you uh, where do you usually go for fishing some of them they say okay we will go to the river which is close to us particular those people for me here we are living in Baghdad and we have the river Kuparino. yes they say okay we will go to the river or we will go to the lake or we will go somewhere else to Romit or uh, I don't know maybe some kind of places where they go for fishing with the family or some people they don't like fishing uh, again, uh, there will appear uh, another question, okay, what do you like? Then you can ask them about your hobbies. You can ask uh, your students, uh, what do they like to do? Can they tell us in uh, several words, even, uh, uh, yes, if they have the level is upper, okay, uh, the level is intermediate, they could speak more and they can give uh, some more wider information than uh, the elementary does. And even in this case, you are uh, pulling them uh, such kind of first uh, you know, to read and then to speak. Uh, you also have you also have here if uh, this is uh, reading uh, skills. You also have, uh, for example, audio format. You can uh, you can 
uh, put them to your students and you will just ask them to listen and then uh, give them into the pairs and uh, can they read uh, to their friends? Not uh, to you directly, but if you are, do you have you are 12 students, then uh, divide them into six by six, yes, and uh, just pair in pair, they could uh, read to each other. By this way, I mean, it takes uh, your time faster and, uh, and they will read to each other. Maybe uh, they will have some mistakes and their friends, their peers will uh, correct them. Or uh, you can also observe, uh, as a teacher, you can observe uh, all uh, your students, how are they doing this activity. And uh, now we come up uh, for the listening. Uh, here, uh, again, uh, we come up with Michael. Now, uh, I just didn't want to just stop uh, for reading with Michael because I'm going to listen it. Uh, uh, I'm going to listen it, uh, what Michael has been uh, doing in school, or what sport does Michael uh, play, uh, how does Michael learn to fish, and how did Michael learn Swiss German. Uh, now, uh, I'm, I will put it, uh, can you please listen carefully, and can you write uh, the answer in chat. Okay, you can just uh, number one, this one, number two, this one, number three, this one, number four, this one. Okay, just one minute. What have you been doing this week? I've been going to school and playing outside with friends mostly. What are you doing in school? We just finished our integrate tests. School ends in two weeks. What do you play when you play with friends? I play football, soccer, basketball with the guys in the neighborhood. We play at Evan's house. He has a basketball hoop in his yard. And I see a fishing pole in your hands. Yeah, I like to go to the pond and fish. I normally go about once a week. I usually catch a few. Today I hooked five, but they all got off. But I did catch two. It really keeps you going. It makes you think, I really want to catch that fish. My dad loves the fish, so he taught me. I don't think you've always lived in this neighborhood. Is that right? Yeah, we lived in Switzerland for two years. I liked it, but I like it here more. There's more stuff to do here, more entertainment. But it was fun in Switzerland. Did you learn a new language in Switzerland? I already knew Swiss German because my mom was from Switzerland. I learned it when I was three or four. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids? Okay, one minute. Okay, now, uh, so we have only hellos. Uh, did you hear well first? Because if yes, then uh, yes, can you write your answers? Or maybe should I put it one more time? Yes, some people could hear, but some people not because of the internet, I think they say. Uh, Bruce, could you also uh, put the questions in the chat uh, box maybe so that they can see and while they're listening, they can look at the questions too. Okay. Maybe you play it once more. Uh, yeah, it's better. I think it's better if I play it once more. Uh, can I stop for a minute? Okay, yes, uh, the questions now. Okay, if uh, some people they said that they didn't, uh, they couldn't hear it. Okay, we will, I, I will put it again. Please listen.
What have you been doing this week? I've been going to school and playing outside with. Okay, can you hear well now? If yes, then let me start from the beginning. What have you been doing this week? I've been going to school and playing outside with friends mostly. What are you doing in school? We just finished our end of grade tests. School ends in two weeks. What do you play when you play with friends? I play football, soccer, basketball with the guys in the neighborhood. We play at Evan's house. He has a basketball hoop in his yard. And I see a fishing pole in your hands. Yeah, I like to go to the pond and fish. I normally go about once a week. I usually catch a few. Today I hooked five, but they all got off. But I did catch two. It really keeps you going. It makes you think. I really want to catch that fish. My dad loves to fish, so he taught me. I don't think you've always lived in this neighborhood. Is that right? Yeah, we lived in Switzerland for two years. I liked it, but I like it here more. There's more stuff to do here, more entertainment, but it was fun in Switzerland. Did you learn a new language in Switzerland? I already knew Swiss German because my mom was from Switzerland. I learned it when I was three or four. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Um, hello from America. Yes, hello from America, and we finish with these words. Okay, did you hear now? Uh, again, Anatya Davitashvili says no, but Faridun says yes. Uh -huh. Okay, yes, Brunilda Condi says yes. Uh, okay, what has Michael been doing in school? Do you have any idea? He has been going to school and hanging out with friends. Uh, no, <laughs> no, Faridun. They just finished the test. Yes, good. And what sports does Michael play? Uh, soccer, football, basketball. Uh, okay, yes, you see, we have different kind of things here. We have soccer and we have football also. Yes, basketball is on John. Uh, good. Uh, also, you can find, you can tell the differences between the football and the soccer uh, to your students. Uh, yes, it's in American English and in British English. It has different uh, translation and different meanings. You can explain to your students. It would be also good. Yes, Sorbonne, uh, thank you doing the test. I think this is for the first question. Uh, he finished end of the great test. Yes, Mohabati uh, Tohir. Yes, I think Mohabat, yeah? The soccer, basketball, uh, yes. Okay, how did Michael learn to fish? Uh, question number three. Uh, his father taught him, yes, yes, yes. Uh, son John and uh, Brunilda Conti, yes, his father taught him. And the last one, how did Michael learn Swiss German? Uh, yes, hello, Parvina. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, question number four, how did Michael learn Swiss German? Uh, they have lived in Switzerland. Sorry for the spelling for a couple of years. <laughs> okay, yes. Yes, uh, her mother is Swiss German. That's why he learned it before. Uh, yes, when he was a three or four, he says, yes, his father taught him ah, fishing. Okay, yes, uh, good. Uh, thank you. Now, uh, Actually, I have this answer. Yeah, you can just vote. Yes, uh, you were correct. Uh, I also wrote football, soccer, and basketball as uh, we got an answer from uh, you. Why? Because I really wanted to pay attention to these two things because you could explain to your students uh, the differences between the American English and British English and what does this football mean or soccer. Uh, how did Michael learn to fish? Yes, you all said that he, his dad taught him. And the last one, how did Michael learn Swiss German? His mother is from the, uh, Switzerland. He learned it when he was three or four. And yes, he also was 
Uh, he also lived in Switzerland uh, for several years, but as, uh, as he says, as he said, he didn't like it. Uh, he liked, uh, I think, the U.S. more because there's more entertainment. There's more things to do. Okay. Uh, oops. Uh, speaking uh, discussions. Okay. Discussion question. In speaking discussions, he has there should be. Uh, okay. Uh, one thing that those things it it's uh, those things that it has in the book and the other things are how you as a teacher you will provide to your students here uh, nancy in uh, his book nancy mentioned about the uh, some kind of uh, things uh, for example about the thing pair uh, thing pair share yes i mean you can you could divide your students into the groups uh, then uh, you will give them uh, a situation. Uh, just uh, you will give them about the Gabriella. Uh, just just give give them the photo of Gabriella. You can ask them. Okay, think about this girl. Yes, and then uh, ask them to 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 take uh, with their friends to to take a, a, in a pairs. They could uh, discuss. They could share their ideas. Or even you can give them the answers. Uh, you uh, you can ask your students. Okay, think about, uh, for example, when have you changed your mind about something? Yes, you can. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, you can uh, just give to your students uh, the questions. You can ask them the question, and you will ask them think a little bit, think for one minute, and then. Uh, ask them to turn to your to their friends to their peers and uh, there they could share their ideas as a teacher you you can observe or you can ask one or two students uh, to tell or to demonstrate to answer uh, between all students in this way it's also a good way to, uh, when they think uh, when they think about something they could tell even if their students are shy uh, why I said about the shy because mostly when uh, uh, in schools in our schools and also in uh, our access classes when we uh, when we uh, choose the kids to our classes we uh, the first uh, it takes some time in order for shy students just uh, to be to come to the board and to tell something uh, even uh, they are not able to stay because uh, they will get uh, their face uh, changes their color very fast. Yes, yeah? some uh, three times or four times they will be red by that time when they go from their desk to the board. That's why uh, in this way uh, you could uh, make your your students to speak and not to be shy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, about the, uh, the things which I told. What, what is your opinion? You have to think for one minute, uh, then uh, they, they talk to your partner in three minutes and then they share with, uh, in a group with their peers. Uh, in writing, uh, actually uh, all these activities, you can use uh, speaking and uh, speaking, uh, I mean, listening and speaking, listening, uh, writing, uh, listening uh, with reading. I mean, uh, listening, you can do it uh, just for, uh, listening for listening. And uh, you can use all these things with listening. Why? Uh, because, uh, yes, as a teacher, you are not uh, able, uh, you are thinking that uh, your students will not understand, then you will just make your, your reading. Uh, you can uh, read uh, fast or you can uh, you cannot read fast because you know that your students will not understand that but that's why you will become uh, read uh, slowly uh, in this action if you are putting uh, listening you can ask them uh, to you can ask your students uh, to listen and then uh, you you can ask them to write and also uh, there's uh, I forget about the differences between the countries for example, uh, here uh, we can see it said that in discussion question, Alex mentioned several kinds of food, turkey, cranberries, pecan, pumpkins. Okay, can we uh, just listen once, uh, then we will uh, talk about this, and then at the end we can make the dictoglas. Uh, why? Because I want you to be familiar with this. 
and then you have to find out that how uh, you can use this activity even if your students are not in a higher level but uh, they will be familiar without being familiar with the text that they could do this exercise okay can can i uh, one minute turn it again team stop what have you been doing this week? Well, this week my cousins came down from New York and we celebrated Thanksgiving at my house with the other side of the family that is in Charlotte. We had a turkey and everybody brought something like a dessert and we all just sat at the table and had fun and afterward we played games. Are there any other foods that are Thanksgiving traditions for your family besides the turkey? We always have my grandmother's broccoli and cheese casserole, which sounds gross, but it's really delicious. We had mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes. My mom made her amazing orange cranberry relish. And this year we also had ham, which was different. We also had pecan pie and pumpkin cheesecake. What kind of games did you play? Well, this year we played Wii basketball and tennis. Did you go shopping on Friday? We went to Charlotte because it's my aunt's birthday. So we hung out with them for a while and watched the football game between Auburn and Alabama. My mom went to a bookstore for a while, but we didn't do any other shopping. What have you been doing today? Well, my dad and I went for a run together, and then we decided to stop and take a break here to get something to drink. It's a little cold outside. How far do you run? Well, it'll be five miles after we run back home from here. Did you do anything else this week? Well, I saw the new Harry Potter movie, which was very good with a lot of my friends. Tonight, I'll babysit my little brother and my sister so my parents can go see the Harry Potter movie together. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Um, well, I don't know if we're that different or not, but it doesn't seem like we are. I would like to say, um, well, good luck and have a good time with your life. What have you been doing? Okay, uh, now uh, this is again uh, the same kind of writing, but now before writing, let's uh, think a little bit, okay? Uh, we have listening, uh, we have listened about the Alex uh, who is 14 years old and we have, uh, she told us about the food and about the sport. Uh, what kind of pre-listening uh, pre activities you could use to your students? Can you write it in? Uh, just in some in, in a sentence. Okay, uh, I, I, I think Natya also said that couldn't hear anything. Connection, oh, okay. Okay, what do you know about the Thanksgiving? Yes. Uh, this is a really good uh, question of Brunilda. And uh, I have already know that you are from Albania. And uh, can you tell us, uh, maybe you could find uh, something similarity or something differences between the culture of the US and uh, between the Albania, or maybe the differences between the food, yes, American or Albanian food and the same with the people in Tajikistan. You could ask them, okay, are there differences between the life or between the food, let's say they said about the food, between the food of uh, Tajik and uh, in US. Okay, uh, what food do you usually cook during traditional holidays? Yes, uh, and that's okay. Uh, and this is uh, the next one, uh, uh, not yet. Ah, yes. Uh, okay, what do you do as a family during the holidays? Or what kind of food do you prepare during your holidays? Yes, comparing is uh, for listening. Okay, and uh, the, same, the same kind of things you could ask with the sport activities. For example, what type of sports do you usually uh, play or do you usually go for? Uh, some 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 of your students will say, okay, I will like football, I will like basketball. Some of them uh, they will say I will like wrestling. Uh, there's a lot of kind of sports. And uh, what what sports you can ask them? What sports do you uh, like? Or what sports do you know? Or do you know uh, about the sports in the U.S.? What kind of sports does 
the American uh, teens uh, or Americans, students or Americans people uh, do, you go, then uh, they could say that yes, if they will listen here, they will say yes, they like basketball, they like football, and uh, of course they like soccer. Uh, what kind of things? Uh, ah, this is another one. Oh, uh, there's uh, another thing. Uh, Alex mentioned uh, saying that uh, she went with her father. Do you think that uh, is it okay if in Tajikistan the girls are running with their fathers? How do you think? You can write. Uh, <laughs> We have chat here. Can you uh, can you write about uh, this one? Uh, is it uh, uh, it depends? As they say uh, it's similar in Albania. Not many girls go out running with their fathers. Yes, uh, here also the same. But when I ask uh, during our course to our classmates here uh, in Dushanbe, I mean yesterday there's some people they say yes it's okay because uh, they usually do but it also depends in Tajikistan in some kind of parts of Tajikistan they is it okay but for some people no because uh, girls usually are helping their mothers with their house and they do some cooking some sewing or something else but not running or not doing some uh, sports yes it's uh, it's growing up now in Tajikistan that the students uh, that uh, students could uh, use uh, sports, I mean, uh, particularly girls. But you see, in the US, it's okay that uh, the girls are running with their father. And again, you can find the differences between the Tajikistan or, and uh, US or the countries which they are learning the language. Uh, they could find uh, these things. Okay, and the last uh, things I just wanted to tell, this is about the Dictoglas. Uh, Dictoglas, this is uh, uh, the activity which was created uh, by, uh, it's, uh, for me, it's really difficult, I just opened it, it's really difficult to, uh, to, write, to, to say her name is Ruth Vajn Rivia, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it, I think now uh, Dictoglas is uh, really common. I mean, all, mostly all teachers uh, in Tajikistan, they know about the Dictoglas. You could prepare, it said the teacher reads the sentences two times at normal speed. But here it's, uh, you have this audio format. It's better if you will uh, put listening. Uh, we put your audio uh, listening in order your students could be prepared for the authentic speech because uh, in this American teen talks the normal speech for our uh, for our students is very fast uh, even if for uh, even if for our teachers <clears throat> as we have it in our class uh, I have uh, given to the elementary students which was very difficult for them. But uh, can you believe that we succeeded? We really succeeded. I we put them uh, five or six times. Students, uh, they listened first. I asked them just to listen. Then after the listening first time, I divided them into, uh, <clears throat> we have 12 people. <clears throat> I divided them into four groups uh, by three, groups of, of three. And in each group, I ask them now, this time you will listen again and please make some notes. Uh, students did the same, but they said that they didn't understand and they couldn't write even one or two words. Then uh, we listened by this time five or six times. And at the end, I asked them, okay, one of our group was a little bit smarter than the other students. They divided uh, their groups into parts. Okay, the first uh, students will write. The first sentence, the second students who should have pay attention to write the second sentence, and the third uh, student should write the third sentence. By this way, they wrote only three sentences. The I put the 15 second of video. It means one uh, one answer uh, from the American teen talk. Uh, I thought that uh, I didn't succeed, it, but in general. Uh, I paid uh, all the students' attention to that listening. I mean, students all work together. 
they wrote, okay, they wrote only three sentences, but it was our first time. And it means that we really succeeded with this exercise. That's why if you are doing this uh, at least one, uh, one time per week with your students, it means they will get used it and they will write more than two or more than three sentences per day. Uh, by this way, they, they could improve their listening. Now, uh, can we do uh, here in our class? I think we have uh, more, we have a little bit time. Yes, uh, Gunnaro? We kind of have one more minute for the okay, presentation, yes, yes, but yes, then 15, 15 more minutes for questions and answer session. Okay, yes, can we just do this dictogloss, uh, then uh, I will stop. Okay, I will put, uh, I will put again the Alex, uh, because we have already listened it one, then let's listen it twice, and the third time uh, you will write, please, can you write on the chat as much as you can, as much as you hear. I will stop after 15 seconds, I will stop. What have you been doing this week? Well, this week my cousins came down from New York and we celebrated Thanksgiving at my house with the other side of the family that is in Charlotte. We had a turkey and everybody brought something like a dessert and we all just sat at the table and had fun and afterward we played games. Are there Okay, it's enough. <laughs> 15 seconds, it's enough. Now, <clears throat> if you have listened it once, now you know the overall uh, thing, what is she talking about? This time, can you make some notes in your uh, notebooks or somewhere which is close to you? Or you can just start writing in your chat, but please do not send it until you listen the third time. What have you been doing this week? Well, this week my cousins came down from New York and we celebrated Thanksgiving at my house with the other side of the family that is in Charlotte. We had a turkey and everybody brought something like a dessert and we all just sat at the table and had fun and afterward we played games. Are there Okay. <clears throat> yes, this is the third time in uh I hope you did uh some of your notes and this time now let's listen uh, the last time and after that uh I will wait your answers. What have you been doing this week? Well, this week my cousins came down from New York and we celebrated Thanksgiving at my house with the other side of the family that is in Charlotte. We had a turkey and everybody brought something like a dessert and we all just sat at the table and had fun and afterward we played games. Okay. Yes, now uh, can you write, uh, you heard all those things uh, can you write on the chat uh son eh, eh, john can it be used for all level i did it with my elementary students and uh yes uh we succeeded because they wrote three sentences i mean this 15 second it was five or six sentences, but at least they wrote three sentences. Uh, of course, the three sentences was with the mistakes, but it, it means that, uh, yes, it means that they listened me carefully and they did their best. Uh, cousins came from New York, other family members from Charlotte, a turkey, had fun, played games. Yes, Gulnora, <laughs> it means you were alone. If in group you could uh, collect all the answers and then you could write uh, the whole sentence. Everybody brought something like they said. Okay, uh, Faridun, my cousins came from New York and we celebrated Thanksgiving. Yes, good. We ate turkey and everyone brought something for the dessert. Good. We, we sat at the table and had a lot of fun and we played games. Good. Uh, uh, they had turkey and play games. Yes, Nasiba. Yes, uh, yes, I had said. Uh, thank you, Faridun. Okay, it means, you see, uh, even if it's uh, authentic speech, even if it speaks fast, uh, just uh, let us give to our students a chance to do this. And I, and I hope that you and your students will succeed with this book. Okay, the next things, when can you use this book? You can use this book in every level of your lesson. You can uh, do it as uh, 
warming up uh, activities you can do it during your listening activities or you can just do it uh, post uh, listening activities it depends on how you will provide and every place you uh, you are doing at the end if you will do this uh, for as for me uh, you can do it at the end it will be better why because uh, they will uh, go home uh, thinking about uh, these things and uh, they will be uh, uh, for me they will be more ready for the next lesson uh, knowing that uh, next lesson the teacher gives this kind of activities yes and uh, thanks for your attention Um, thank you very much, Firuz, for introducing this book in a way that maybe we have seen this book, but we didn't know really how to use, you know, the techniques that you provided today. Um, they were really, really are uh, interesting and useful. And I actually uh, put my question there in the chat box. So, um, yeah, I mean, when you ask your students to write as many details as they could, did you ask them to write complete sentences or just writing the detail was enough? At the end, when you when they listened three times at the end, uh, at the end, I just give them a flip chart and uh, they will combine, they will collect all their answers and then they will write on a flip chart and uh, they come one by one uh, to the board and they make some kind of a small presentation what they did. Uh, also, I mean, uh, your question, which were before here, what was your instruction? Did you ask them to provide complete sentences or just the activities or phrases? Uh, yes, uh, I mean, uh, this, uh, this is the same question, yeah. Uh, yeah. it, it, it really depends. And what about the activity? I mean, uh, I just uh, told about two or three activities which uh, was written in this, uh, which was written in the book. But there's a lot of techniques that you could use with this book. It's, it depends on the level of uh, the teacher, how he or she wants to provide his uh, material to students. Sure, yeah. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, those who joined later uh, this uh, webinar, uh, Firuz in the uh, beginning, he mentioned about the author and we are so lucky to have the author Nancy Eccles. Maybe Nancy could give or speak to uh, the origin of this book a little bit, uh, how you know the idea came and uh, how the process was with selection, these kids, you know, these students for like, uh, you know, gathering the information and recording everything. So if you could speak more to that, Nancy. Uh, turn turn yeah, on unmute. your mic, unmute yourself again. <laughs> there, hi. Um, yes, the idea for this came when I was in Tajikistan. One of the high school teachers said that her students wished they had a book of stories about American young people. And so that spring, I went to the big TESOL conference where every publisher had a booth and no one had a book like that. So I just started doing some interviews and posting them to a web page where I hoped a few Tajik teachers could find them. And it grew into this project. Um, the uh, students, the, uh, there's, there are no professionals involved. I interviewed ordinary Americans, my neighbors, people I met at McDonald's, and the, the, the people who read the interviews and are recorded, they're just a regular American teens. They aren't professional readers. Um, sometimes the name, the picture, the voice, and the interview are four different people, but they're all real people. You know? And I learned a couple of things. And one of them is that I needed um, parents' permission to use a picture. And some parents you know, were a little uncomfortable and didn't get permission. Um, but I think we, if, if possible, I'd like to ask a Bruna Conde, who's doing this in Albania, because she said her students might uh, do their own interviews. And I think it would be just wonderful if we could find some kind of a website where students from American Corners and Access English and things 
could create little interviews like this and post them. Bruno, what are you doing? <laughs> Hello. Um, it was so interesting to attend this, and I'm very glad I communicated with Nancy over the holidays to find out about this thing. Um, so what I've been doing in Albania is I started this club. We have three American corners here in three different uh, towns in Albania. And um, in the northern town, it's a small town. They wanted to do a club for high school students. They wanted to find uh, provide an activity for them to come uh, once, uh, twice a month so that they can discuss about American culture. And I was looking around for what structure to give something that will run from November to May. And I'm so happy I came across the book. I think at some point we had, uh, you had mentioned this, Nancy, when we visited Albania. I didn't remember it from then. I was looking at American English and I found the resource and what better way to um, tend to a group whose English level I didn't know and uh, provide American culture through teams that discuss their life. And what I've been doing is we discuss one um, of the interviews with the club and um, then I prepare in advance about cultural elements. Like if they mention places, I take some pictures and show them more, we discuss about those places. Sometimes we do role play. Um, one student becomes the interviewer and the other reads the answer as preparation for the interviews. But um, I had this at the back of my head and I'm glad one of the students asked, can we do similar interviews? And I said, yes, definitely. But then I thought I want to do the interviews to be used more than in the small town. We can have the American Corner play them here and they can share them in their social media. But it would be amazing if other people around the world read the or listen to the interviews of um, Albanian um, teenagers speaking in English. Uh, teenagers from Tajikistan speaking in English and from other countries as well. We do a lot of cultural comparisons and uh, I find it inspiring that Albanian teens say they have a lot in common with American teens because usually the feeling is everybody loves America because it's a dreamland and we don't have a beautiful life here in Albania. But these teens, they're like, we do this also. All this is similar to what we do in Albania. Yes. Thank you, uh, and we all, uh, and uh, if you can see in this book, you can find in all the spheres. So we got the sport, we got food, we got traveling. You can find everything you wish, and uh, you will just give uh, the start for your students to speak, and then they will do their best, and uh, your, your lessons will be more interesting and more useful, more fruitful. And here Nasiba is asking, what are the benefits of using authentic uh, teen stock in class based on your experience? Based on my experience, uh, Nasiba, it is uh, really good. I mean, uh, first of all, they will increase their listening. And then you know that the students will uh, imitate the speech, okay? If they will speak, for example, they say that uh, state uh, instead of state, uh, they could use uh, try to say the word not with S, but like with S. I mean, imitating the speaker. It's really good that by this way, the students can learn faster than uh, they do. Of course, we do, uh, let's say uh, the, the same dictoglas, if you do it uh, with my uh, speaking, I will read it uh, in my level. I will read it as I know, because I know that my students are in the elementary level. And I, I'm, I'm reading it uh, not so fast <laughs> because I know slowly because I know that uh, they will not understand me. But here they have to listen and it is fast and they have to use it. Of course, it's good. Yeah, and I think this uh, kind of uh, conversation and especially with the native speakers also helps students to prepare for TOEFL tests because some of the TOEFL uh, tests, you know, uh, have, you know, these kinds of conversation uh, between uh, two people. So if we can prepare our students, you know, starting from this, I think they, it will be easier for them to take uh, the uh, TOEFL test as well. Um, so uh, Firuz, thank you so much that you uh, chose this topic and you uh, invited Nancy and also Brunilda. And uh, you see, uh, we have the author here, the writer here, who is connecting, you know, teachers and professionals 
who are sharing their experience and we are English Without Borders also connecting others to this great initiatives. And we really hope that maybe in future, uh, Firuz and Brunilda will kind of keep in contact and maybe do kind of a joint project and we English Without Borders will uh, host another webinar with you too so that you can share more of the activities that you uh, have come up with so that we can share with other English teachers, not only in Tajikistan, because the English Without Borders uh, webinars are joined by uh, English teachers around the world. Yes, thank you very much. I, I hope that, yes, one day we will have this, or maybe one day we will organize some uh, kind of uh, speaking activities with our students. Yeah. Anyway, yes, anyway, uh, I, I found this resource is useful. Uh, why? Because uh, when I, uh, when as a teacher, you will see that your student is succeeding for something and you will be more happier than you do. You know that your hard work is uh, useful for someone. That's why, yeah. yes, I'm, I'm really exactly. happy that I found this resource and I'm really happy that to meet with Nancy and uh, I, I, I maybe I wrote her several times and we discussed, we started from the poster session and up to now. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Nancy. I enjoyed your presentation immensely. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was really, really useful presentation. And uh, I think we've got a lot of ideas uh, because uh, we have many comments from English teachers. They say that um, how we should help you know our students to speak so that our students start to speak so if we can have you know more of the you know listening and uh, as you said that uh, we should also teach them to pronounce the words the way that you know the native speakers right do so and this will help you know gradually you know uh, improve their uh, pronunciation skills the speaking skills and you know others as well so um, it's, we are coming to the end of this uh, session. Thank you so much, uh, Firuz, uh, for this wonderful presentation. Thanks again for Nancy and Brunilda for joining. This might be early morning for you. Brunilda, is it, uh, what time is it there in Albania now? Can you unmute her? Yeah. It's 3 p.m. here. Ah, oh, okay. It's good. So for you, it's kind of, uh, yeah. So, and it's 7 uh, p.m. here in Tajikistan. Mm -hmm. So we are all in different time zones. Uh, we really appreciate, you know, that you joined uh, the English Without Borders webinars and really hope for the future and fruitful collaboration. Thank you so much for everyone who joined us today and uh, wish everyone uh, Good evening, those who are in Tajikistan, the others, uh, Nancy, for you a good day, and for uh, Brunilda, good uh, evening. So see you all next week. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.